Hi, my name's Ian Baines, I'm the Director of Adult Social Care and Wellbeing here in Coldale Council. I think people often have an idea that growing old means that people will increasingly become more fragile and more vulnerable, and that gives quite a negative stereotype about older people. And we wanted to try and change that and see if we could see a way in which we could either help support people to maintain their physical activity and their strength, or at least um, stop that deteriorating rapidly. I suppose as system leaders, we're always thinking about how can we deliver our services better, um, but often in the, the backdrop of austerity and thinking that we need to save money. My belief is that if we can help people to be physically active, people will be independent for a lot longer and therefore it should be part of our call to help people be more physically active because it will help us manage our resources better um, going forward. An example for me might be that often when somebody receives home care in their own home, um, a home care worker will probably come in and do a lot of things around the home for the person that's on their support plan. But what they might not always do is encourage the person to be involved in that activity. So what you might not see, you might not first think of all that what we're trying to say is we're going to get people to play sports. But actually what it might be about is, can the person get out of the chair? Can they walk to the front door and let them in? Um, could they be involved in some of the more daily living tasks like um, doing the washing or making the meal rather than having the meal made for them? And those are all small steps to actually maintain someone's physical conditioning. I think as a system leader, our challenge is to embrace the idea and free staff up to have a go and not be worried about getting it too wrong, because actually some of this is about breaking down barriers and, and changing the way that we work and cultural practice. And almost, if you hear yourself doing the but or the no, just question yourself and think about doing things differently. I was actively involved in some of the steering group work around Active Coldale. So what that did is crystallise some thinking we'd already had in terms of doing some work around helping people be more motivated to move in whatever setting they lived. And then I talked to my staff team about how they could um, be involved. And actually that was quite interesting because they all went through the, um, the design thinking training. And actually that helped them come together as a team and think about the problems we were trying to solve. And I think they'd already decided what the solution was. But interestingly, as the works progressed, they really critically thought about, was their original solution the answer to the problem we're trying to solve? And actually the work they're doing now is quite different. So they'd originally thought the, the barrier to people being more physically active was about transport. But actually, when, we, when they did the, the work and challenged each other and were challenged to think differently, they realised what it was, was that the way in which we support plan and assess people actually doesn't take account of physical activity and the strengths that people have got. And it almost worked from what we call a deficit model. So we tried to change that. And I think we're starting to see some real results now. We were quite deliberate in thinking about what the, the team that would do the design thinking, what they would do. So we brought together frontline practitioners, we brought together our commissioners, because what we realised was that it wasn't just one staff group that needed to approach this problem, we needed to approach it from every angle. So we've now got commissioners thinking about how they commission and in, in, embrace physical activity into the commissioned work. We've got social workers thinking about when they're out there assessing, really listening to, uh, to older people and talking about what their ambitions are. And it might be as simple as, um, I used to enjoy going to a tea dance, I'd love to go again. And rather than simply saying, actually, that's not possible because you, you're a bit housebound, thinking about, well, actually, could we make some small steps towards that? Could it be about helping people do some, um, some chair-based exercises to just develop their strength and get them out of the chair, and then building those incremental steps to the point where they could actually go to a tea dance. My most favourite one is one of a woman who was living in a residential home who had talked about how she used to really enjoy swimming, and she hadn't really sw swam very much in her adult life 
the point where her family couldn't even remember that she'd been engaged in swimming and were a bit surprised. So this is someone who's in their 80s and we set about a plan to get over a six week period to get her to be able to go swimming. And that person did achieve that goal. And in fact, they've been again since. And I kind of think most people would think actually getting somebody from a residential home to go swimming at the age of 80 plus, why would you want to do that? But we clearly listened to what she wanted to do and set about a plan to get her there. And actually, she describes it as being one of the second best things she's ever done in her life. I'm not quite sure what the first thing was. Um, and, that, and I think that's made a real difference to her. And it's given her a way of talking to her family about something that we're completely unaware of in terms of her, her history. So I can see how that's really enriched her, but also is quite a good role model for other people who might think, I'm a bit too old, I'm not going to have a go at this. I think we've, we've got to change people's stereotypes about ageing.